it's the Reading Bug again, here to tell you that today's episode of Reading Bug Adventures is sponsored by Penguin Random House Audio and Narwhal and Jelly, Unicorn of the Sea by Ben Clanton, now available as an audiobook. If you love audiobooks like I do, and narwhals like I do, be sure to get this audiobook and other great Penguin Random House audiobooks at libro.fm slash the reading bug or wherever audiobooks are sold. Hi, reader. Welcome back for part two of our butterfly adventure. Part one was released earlier, so be sure to go back and listen if you haven't already. Reading Bug Adventures is written, performed, and produced by all of us at The Reading Bug, our family-owned independent bookstore. As you know, we're continuing to write and record all of our original podcast episodes and music from home. So if things sound a little bit different than you're used to, that's probably the reason why. Instead of recording in the studio, we've been using Zencaster to record over the internet, and we're thankful that their technology enables us to keep on recording from our home. I also want to thank Resonate Recordings, who does the sound mixing and mastery for every Reading Bug Adventures episode. Another great big thanks to our sponsors and to all of you for helping us continue to create this podcast. It takes a lot of time to write and record every episode and every song, and we really couldn't do it without your help. A big thank you and hello to our newest patrons, Allison and Laura from Virginia, and Samantha and Asher from California. You're part of what makes Reading Bug Adventures possible. To become a patron and support our work, please visit patreon.com slash readingbugadventures. You can also support our podcast by shopping with us. In addition to our store in California, we have millions of books for every age, gift items, staff recommendations, and even personalized care packages, all available for you to purchase online at thereadingbug.com. Or you can sign up as a subscriber to our perfectly personalized reading subscription at readingbugbox.com. With books handpicked just for you by me and the rest of the Reading Bug staff. Okay, reader, I think it's time we get back to our adventure, don't you? In part one, we follow the great monarch migration southward into Mexico toward warmer weather. We're hoping to reunite a baby monarch caterpillar, who we named Esperito, with his monarch butterfly family. We're also hoping to reunite our new friend, Mari, with her grandmother, so they can celebrate the Mexican holiday, Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead, together. Let's hurry back to continue on this important adventure. On the count of three... Let's all imagine ourselves back into our butterfly adventure together. Ready? One, two, three, let's fly! It's a reading bug adventure. There's lots of fun in store. Just inside our book bag, there's new places to explore. Grab your crayons and paper and your imaginations too. The reading bug and I can't wait to share our trip. Hi, reader. Welcome back to our butterfly adventure. We're so happy to see you again, aren't we, Reading Bug? We sure are, and we still got a long way to go on our adventure today. Did you know that some monarch butterflies fly more than 3,000 miles to migrate to warmer climates for the winter? That's a really, really long way. It sure is. But we're getting closer and closer to our destination, the Mexican city of Maravatio where the butterflies end their long migration in the Oyamel fir trees. And where our new friend Mari's Tita lives, and is about to celebrate Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. It's a Mexican holiday to celebrate the history and lives of family members who have died. Exactly! I'm so thankful to be on this adventure with you. I've learned so much about monarch butterflies, but I'm really eager to get to Maravatio to see my Tita and celebrate the life of my Tito, who passed away earlier this year. Just like monarch butterflies do during their migration southward, we stop to take a quick rest somewhere in northern Mexico. Butterflies can't fly when it's cold, so they rest until the sun warms them up again. They don't always stop in the same places either. They make stops wherever they need to along their journey. Lots of people love to track the butterfly's progress. They take pictures and report their locations when they see monarch bivouacs in trees and parks along the migration route. But Mari's right. I think it's time for us to keep moving so we can reunite her with her family. And, remember, we have another friend to reunite as well. The fat little monarch caterpillar that Mari named Esperito. We have a plan to be in Maravatio by November 2nd. And I'm sure the book bag will help us all get there. Esperito was a fat little caterpillar, reading bug. But not anymore. Look! Oh, wow! Esperito is gone. And in his place is a green cocoon hanging from a leaf. That's called a pupa, or chrysalis, Lauren, and Esperito is inside. He's not a caterpillar anymore. 
But how did Espirito get in there? When a monarch caterpillar has grown big enough, he leaves some silk to hang himself from, and the chrysalis forms under his skin as he hangs upside down. After about a day, the chrysalis is ready, and the caterpillar sheds his skin for the final time, revealing the chrysalis beneath. The skin falls to the ground, the caterpillar's body inside liquefies and reorganizes, and the chrysalis hardens to protect him as he grows into his final form. A butterfly. That's exactly right. How long does it take, Reading Bug? A monarch usually remains as a pupa for about one week before emerging as a butterfly. That means the book bag transported us forward in time by another week. Yes. The butterflies are able to fly faster in warmer southern weather as they get closer and closer to their final destination. We're nearly there. Well, then what are we waiting for? Let's hop back inside the book bag and head for our final stop, the city of Maravatio, where we can reunite Esperito with his butterfly family and Mari with her grandmother. Magic book bag, it's time to go to the Mexican city of Maravatio, where beautiful orange and black monarchs swarm after traveling south to keep themselves warm. And where family ancestors also will go to celebrate Dia de los Muertos. That's right, Mari. Let's hurry up so we can find your tita. We've already traveled about a month into the future, which means it's almost November 2nd when the spirits of adult relatives visit the living for Dia de los Muertos. On the count of three, let's all hop back into the book bag. And don't forget to bring the chrysalis. One, two, three, jump! Here we go! And here Esperito goes, too. I think his adventure is even more exciting than ours. Watch! The chrysalis hardens and its calmness belies the miraculous changes happening inside, where parts liquefy and begin rearranging, and the monarch is constantly changing and changing. Till one day he's ready, he's completely transformed, and a magic metamorphosis has been performed. The pupa starts wiggling and splitting apart as the beautiful butterfly's life gets its start. Did you know that a monarch butterfly lives through four different lives? He begins as an egg on a milkweed leaf. Then he turns into a worm that does nothing but eat. In his third life, he forms a chrysalis and prepares for his final metamorphosis. Emerging as a butterfly one day Where he'll spread his wings and fly away Wow! The meadow below us is quickly fading as we climb higher and higher in the sky. We are flying quickly over Mexico in the warm high wind sweeping above the mountains again. From way up high, Mexico looks a little bit like a high-heeled shoe, doesn't it, reader? The heel of the shoe there is the Baja Peninsula that's located just below California and the rest of Mexico is the shoe. Mexico is bounded to the north by the United States, to the west by the Pacific Ocean, to the east by the Gulf of Mexico, and to the south by Central America. Mexico is the 13th largest country in the world, Lauren. It's three times larger than the state of Texas, which is the second largest state in the United States. You're right, Reading Bug. Mexico is very big, and it's very diverse too. If you look down below, you can see that it's green along the coast, but in the middle of Mexico is rocky and brown. That's the mountain range that runs almost all the way through the country. Maravatio is located in the mountains near the center of Mexico. And look, I think we're flying over the Oyamel fir forest now. The mountains are dense with beautiful trees just below us. Those forests are where my Tito loved to hike when he was alive. Look, there's a city just beyond the trees. In the middle of the city square is a park with a fountain and a large gazebo. There are people everywhere, and I can even smell the sweet smells of flowers, incense, and yummy food wafting toward us. That must be Maravatio. I'm getting hungry. I sure hope we're coming in for a landing. I don't. You don't? What's wrong, Reading Bug? This is exactly where we wanted to go on our adventure today. It's where the monarch butterflies migrate, and it's where Mari's grandmother lives and is celebrating Dia de los Muertos. We've been trying to get here this whole time, but now you don't want to go? Yeah... I think we should turn back now. Uh, I'm pretty sure I just saw a skeleton wandering through the streets down there. I think that Maravatio might be haunted. Haunted? No, it's just Dia de los Muertos, Reading Bug. We made it in time for the holiday. During Dia de los Muertos, people dress as skeletons, ghosts, and ghouls, kind of like Halloween, and they celebrate in the streets. It's not scary, it's a party. Well, at least that's what my Tito and Tita always told me. 
I'm... I'm not sure. Reading Bug, we need to get Esperito to his monarch family and Mari to her tita. We can't turn back now. Besides, I think we're about to land. Right here in the middle of the city square. Hold on, everyone. Are we really truly here? In Maravatio? I think so, Mari. Well then, what are we waiting for? Let's hop out and find my tita. Mari, are... are you sure? Yes, we've traveled all this way, thousands of miles, just like monarch butterflies on the great monarch migration. We have to finish the adventure. Mari's right, Reading Bug. I know you're scared, but if we all stick together, we should be fine. Let's all step carefully out of the book bag and see what's outside. Follow me. Oh, okay, if you really think it's safe. Oh, wow. Look at this place, reader. Oh, no, 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 no. Back into the book bag, everyone. Look, there are hundreds of ghosts, ghouls, skeletons, and mummies walking through the streets all around us. And the ones over there are carrying an open coffin and heading right toward us. The reading bug is right. There are several giant skeletons hovering over the crowd moving through the streets. They must be at least 18 feet tall. Their arms and legs are moving to the rhythm of the music playing in the streets and their eyes are gleaming brightly in the evening twilight. The holes where their mouths should be are twisted into creepy leers, and they're dressed in suits and in gowns, and they're wearing enormous hats. Those hats are called sombreros, Lauren. And look, those skeletons are just giant puppets, controlled by the people standing beneath them. My Tito always told me that Dia de los Muertos is not sad, and it's not scary. It's supposed to be a day when families celebrate the return of their ancestor spirits to the earth. And I think that's what all these people in Maravatio were doing, dressing colorful costumes. Tito said that on the Day of the Dead, you say, Feliz Dia de los Muertos, when you see someone or something. It means Happy Day of the Dead. Feliz Dia de los Muertos. I like that. Reader, let's all say it together. Ready? Feliz Dia Dia de de los Muertos. Feliz Dia de los Muertos. It is a celebration. How fun! Reading Bug, it's not a ghoulish gathering after all. This is a parade. Come on, let's join in the fun. Not yet, Lauren. I really need to find my Tita. She lives in a small home just off the city square. This way, I think. Follow me. Yes, yes. This is the house, I'm sure of it. I recognize it from the pictures we have at home. Come on. Wow, look at Mari's grandmother's home, reader. It's a small brick building squeezed in between other homes on the street, but it's beautifully decorated with brightly colored paper, streamers, and lovely golden flowers. Those flowers are Mexican marigolds, Lauren, or cempasuchil. They are also sometimes called flor de muerto, which means flower of the dead, because they're used everywhere in Mexico during Dia de los Muertos. They are very fragrant and their vibrant color represents the sun, which helps to guide the spirits back to the land of the living. They smell amazing. And these colorful paper decorations are papel picado, a Mexican folk art craft that represents the wind. They are made sort of like we make paper snowflakes. Oh, and look, Mari, what is that table in the corner? It's overflowing with decorations and flowers and small painted objects. Tita's ofrenda. Ofrenda? Yes, an ofrenda is a table of offerings. Pictures, foods, and other things that will help welcome our relatives back to the land of the living on Dia de los Muertos. Look, these framed pictures are of all my family's ancestors. And here's a picture of my Tito from when he and my Tita were first married. He's very handsome, Mari, and he looks very kind. Oh, he is. I mean, he was. Oh, how I wish I could have seen him one last time before he died. Mari, what is the food here on the ofrenda? It smells wonderful. That's pen de muerto, and it is good. Sweet and yummy and dusted with sugar. The bread on the ofrenda is for the visiting dead. Some of my Tito's favorite foods are here as well. And these skulls are made of colored sugar. Are these colorful figures on the ofrenda made of sugar too? No, no, no. These here are alebrijes, and they are carved out of wood and painted in these bright colors. Alebrijes are mythical creatures from the spirit world who look after our loved ones once they've left our world, like a guardian angel. And these other figures, Skulls and skeletons are made by local craftspeople. It's a beautiful tribute to your family, Mari. And I'm so happy I get to see it in person. Thank you. Hey, 
What are you doing here? A, a, a skeleton! The reading bug is right. It is a skeleton. He's tall with a pale white skull set on top of the tuxedo he's wearing. There are deep, dark circles where his eyes should be. His outfit is lined with intricate gold designs, and he's wearing a hat covered in colorful flowers. Mari, is that your g- g- grandfather returned from the land of the dead? Mari? Mariposa Hernandez? Yes, I am Mari, and this is Lauren, the reading bug and our reader friend. You... you know me? Only from pictures. La Pequeña Monarca. Pequeña Monarca? That's what my Tito used to call me. Si, yes. He told me all about you, Mari. I am Francisco, your grandparents' neighbor and friend. Your grandparents' neighbor is a skeleton? I know. <laughs> this is just makeup and a costume for the Dia de los Muertos celebration. Many people in the city are dressed as skeletons to celebrate life and death together. I was just coming by to help your tita to the city square when I found you here. But your tita did not tell me that you would be coming, Mari. Are your parents here also? Your tita will be so happy to see you. Francisco, we're here on an adventure, and we brought Mari with us. Francisco, is that you? Who are you speaking with? Ay, Dios mío, mi pequeña monarca. Mari, is that you? Tita, Tita, yes, it's me. We did it, reader. We helped Mari find her Tita. Mi pequeña monarca, I am so, so happy to see you. Pa, mi amor, what are you doing here? I'm so sorry that I wasn't able to see Tito before he died, Tita. I wanted to visit you so badly, but Lauren, the reading bug, and our reader friend helped bring me here to you, using the magic of the books we've been reading and our imaginations. And I brought you this. A picture of a butterfly I drew, to place on the ofrenda. Es un milagro. Ay, miracle. Your Tito I will love this beautiful drawing. The last thing that your Tito said to me was, Veré a nuestro pequeño monarca el día de los muertos. Ay, and he was right. Lauren, reader, reading bug, that means I will see our little monarch on the day of the dead. But how could he have known? Tita Elena, we must celebrate the return of your precious Mari to Maravatio and the miracle that has brought her here. Join us to celebrate family and the life of your Tito for Dia de los Muertos. Yes, tonight we parade to the cemetery. We will spend tonight. See, si, that is right, Elena. On our way, we will scatter marigold petals so that our loved ones can find the way to the ofrendas that we have made for them. When they arrive at the cemetery, we will cover the gravestones with marigold flowers and food, just like your tita has covered your ofrenda. We will sing and dance in the evening, and the children will play hide-and-seek. Later, we will pray, and then we will tell stories as we eat our dinner together. Finally, we will wrap ourselves in warm blankets and sleep in the cemetery with our loved ones until the morning, when we return to our homes. I listen, Mary. I can you hear in the mariachi music the parade to the cemetery. It's green closet. And we will join it together. Come, follow me. And remember, Dia de los Muertos is a celebration of life. So let's all celebrate. The narrow street is full of people, reader. Everyone is cheering, singing, and dancing to the music. And the costumes are incredible. Faces are painted in elaborate designs as skeletons, decorated in jewels and colorful patterns and wearing fancy lace dresses, beautiful suits, and large decorated hats. Here, throw some marigold flower petals as you walk, and dance. The cemetery is just ahead. Your Tito's grave is just at the edge of the cemetery. Will we uh, get to meet Mari's Tito tonight? Will he really be returning from the dead for a visit? Mari has told us so much about him, but I'm not sure I want to meet a real spirit or skeleton. Ay, children, you must not be disappointed if you do not see Mari's Tito Juan tonight. Real skeletons and spirits don't appear. 
even el Día de los Muertos. I suspect that the only skeletons you will see today are me and all the others dancing and celebrating in the parade and the colorful and delicious sugar skulls that serve as a sweet reminder that death is a part of life and should not be feared. Really? But Tita, the reading bug brought me here for Dia de los Muertos today so that I could say goodbye to Tito. Mari, mi amor, you can still say goodbye and your Tito will hear you. Está en manos de Dios. What did Tita say, Mari? She said, that is in God's hands. Yes, your Tita's grave is just over there. It is overlooking the beautiful Oyemel fir forest that he loves so much. Oyemel fir trees, where the monarch butterflies arrive in the fall. Lauren, reader, Mari, where is Esperito? We forgot all about him. Oh, reading, but you're right. I haven't seen him since we landed in Maravatio. We were supposed to reunite him with his monarch family, too. Lauren, reader, reading, Pug, look! Monarch butterflies, reader! Everywhere! There must be hundreds, or thousands, or hundreds of thousands flying all around us! A kaleidoscope of butterflies! It's a sea of gentle gold and black matching the gold of the marigold flowers that are scattered everywhere! The delicate monarch butterflies are flitting through the cemetery toward the Oyamel fir forest, touching each of the tombstones as they pass. I've never seen anything more beautiful! Lauren, reader, Mari, look, one of the butterflies has landed on Mari's shoulder. Esperito? Is that you? Look, he's a beautiful monarch butterfly now. The fourth stage of a monarch's life, the day before he emerges as a butterfly. A monarch's chrysalis becomes clear. It then cracks open and the butterfly begins to climb out, hanging upside down. Blood flows into the new butterfly's crumpled wings, straightening them out. And with that, the butterfly is ready to take to the skies, just like your Esperito has. His golden wings are edged in black, with small white dots all around them. And inside each wing, there are black veins that create a beautiful design that's mirrored on the other wing. Thanks for stopping by to see us, little guy. Now, go on and join the rest of your friends and family on the OML Furs. No, wait! I'm... I'm not ready to say goodbye. Mari? It can be hard... To say goodbye, to let someone go, might make you cry. When you feel sad, imagine them as a beautiful winged butterfly. When someone's in your heart, you'll never be too far apart. There's never a doubt, they're always about. You're never without your butterfly. It hurts inside, I know Though you're far away They're there every day Your heart's where they'll stay Your butterfly <laughs> Celebrate life And try to remember The magical times That you share together It hurts to say goodbye It's okay if you need to cry But after a wait Your tears will abate And then celebrate Your butterfly <laughs> They may need to fly away But you'll think of them still every day Your love will keep growing Your joy will be showing Try to remember the magical times that you share together When someone's in your heart You'll never be too far apart There's never a doubt They're always about You're never without Your butterfly You're right, Lauren. Thank you. Okay, 
Fly home to your family and friends in the OML trees, and thank you for bringing us with you on your amazing migration south today, mi pequeña monarca. Look, reader, Esperito is flapping his delicate wings and flying away. Goodbye, Tito. Tito? Mari, you don't think that Esperito is your... Tito, yes. Come to visit from the land of the dead on this magical Dia de los Muertos. I know, my pequeña monarca. Here at the cemetery, we'll celebrate, sing, play, and pray. And after that, we will all sleep here by the graves. Will you all be joining us? I know your Tita would love to keep you here by her side, Mari. Tita, I'm afraid our adventure is nearly over, and we must be heading back to our families. Por favor, just one more night with my Mari. Tita, I'm sorry. I must go back home to Mommy and Papi. But I'm so blessed to have been able to travel to see you and to celebrate our family and my Tito with you. Isn't I been blessed with a long life with a wonderful family? I promise I'll be back. Just like the monarchs, I will return to Maravatio to see you, Tita. The whole city of Maravatio, your Tita, and all of your ancestors will be waiting for you with open arms when you return. Te amo mucho, Mary. Te amo mucho, Tita. Goodbye. Mari, Lauren, Reader, it's time to go. Saying goodbye isn't easy, I know, but we must be on our way. Thank you, Mari, for sharing your family with us today. Okay, everybody, are you ready? Let's all flap our wings and fly back home together. Hop three times with me, then into the book bag. Here we go. One hop, two hops, three hops, and we're in. We've had a big adventure within our book bag, and I think we saved the day. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, book bag. Now it's time to fly away. We're lifting back up into the sky, just like a beautiful monarch butterfly, headed back north to our homes. Just like the butterflies do once winter is over. You mean, Esperito may come back to visit us in your garden reading book? Yes. The monarchs that migrate south live for eight to nine months, long enough to migrate back north again. I'll keep watch for him every day once it's spring again. What an amazing adventure, Reading Bug. We were able to migrate with the monarchs and witness the four stages of life of our little monarch friend, Esperito. Egg, caterpillar, chrysalis, and butterfly. And thanks to Mari and her books, we were able to celebrate Dia de los Muertos to see the amazing festivities and decorations and to celebrate the lives of those who have died. Reader, what parts of today's adventure will you remember the most? I think I'll always remember the kaleidoscope of monarch butterflies in the cemetery. I'll remember saying goodbye to my Tito with my Tita by my side. And I'll remember the incredible skeleton costumes and the Dia de los Muertos parade. In just a few minutes, I'll play music for you to color to, and you can draw illustrations of our adventures to share with your friends and family. And if you had fun on today's adventure and want to read more about butterflies or Dia de los Muertos, you can read any of the books in my book bag. A complete list can be found at thereadingbug.com slash adventures. Mari, Lauren, Reader, we're back! You're right. We're back in the Reading Bug's garden after another amazing adventure together. Thanks for all your help today, Reader. When you're a reader, you're a leader. You're ready to learn about everything as you grow. You'll show this world that you can be anything. You could write a book or fly a plane, build a house with a giant crane. Whatever you do, one thing will be true. There's nothing you can't do. You can see it through just by being you. Cause you're a reader, you're a leader You're ready to learn about everything As you grow, you'll show This world that you can be anything You could sing your way into a Broadway show Don't let anyone tell you no Whatever you do, one thing will be true There's nothing you can't do You can make your dreams come true Just by being you After a long migration, an incredible adventure, it's time for us all to go. 
It was wonderful meeting you and adventuring with you today, Mari. Thank you for introducing us to your Tita and Tito today. Thank you. What an incredible trip. Goodbye, Lauren. Goodbye, Reading Bug. Goodbye, Reader. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm more excited than ever for our next adventure together, Reader. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye. It's a Reading Bug adventure. There's lots of fun in store. Just inside our book bag, there's new places to explore. Grab your crayons and paper and your imaginations too. The Reading Bug and I can't wait to share our trip with you. Today's episode of Reading Bug Adventures is sponsored by Penguin Random House Audio and Narwhal and Jelly, Unicorn of the Sea by Ben Clanton. Now available as an audiobook. Oh, hi, Lauren. Would you like a waffle? I was just whipping up a batch. Waffles? Reading Bug, you're cooking and reading at the same time? That sounds a little dangerous. Oh, no. It's not dangerous at all, Lauren. I'm not reading. I'm listening. Listening? Yes. I'm listening to the audiobook version of Narwhal and Jelly, Unicorn of the Sea from Penguin Random House Audio. I love listening to audiobooks for bedtime, nap time, car rides, anytime I can't read to myself. Me too. And Narwhal and Jelly is one of my favorite graphic novel series. Narwhal and Jelly love waffles, parties, and adventures. So I decided to celebrate with a little party of my own. Oh, I do love a good adventure and a good waffle. Can I join you? Of course you can, Lauren. Have you ever read Narwhal and Jelly? It's a wonderfully silly early graphic novel series featuring three stories. In the first, Jelly learns that Narwhal is a really good friend. Then, Narwhal and Jelly form their own pod of awesomeness with their ocean friends. And finally, Narwhal and Jelly read the best book ever, even though it doesn't have any words or pictures. In the series, Ben Clanton, the author, showcases the joy of friendship, the benefits of working together, and the power of imagination. You can purchase the audiobook version of Narwhal and Jelly, Unicorn of the Sea by Ben Clanton at Libro.fm slash The Reading Bug or wherever audiobooks are sold. Thanks to Penguin Random House Audio for their support. And thanks to all of our individual sponsors as well. If you're interested in becoming a patron, please visit our page at patreon.com. Thank you for listening to Reading Bug Adventures. I'm Lauren Savage, and today's adventure was an original story written by Diane and Brandon Savage. This episode was performed by me, Chloe, and Brandon Savage, and by Chesney Everett and Myrna Perla. Original music was performed by me, and lyrics were written by Brandon Savage. The Reading Bug is our family-owned, independent children's bookstore in California, and we're passionate about educating, entertaining, and engaging children of all ages. Learn more about us at thereadingbug.com and our personalized subscription box service at readingbugbox.com. Thank you. Thank you.